In today's Private Pilot Ground Lesson 1.11, we're going to talk about velocity versus G loads. You will need to know this information for your check ride and your FAA written exam. In our last video lesson, we mentioned that when your load factor increases, your stall speed increases as well. It's important to note, however, that the airplane always stalls at the same critical angle of attack. When an airplane turns, its load factor also increases. Increased load factor feels like we're being pulled down harder in the sea. We left off in the last lesson talking about how exceeding our airplane's G limits can cause structural damage or failure. We also mentioned that the higher your airspeed, the more your load factor increases. Let's look at this velocity load factor chart from the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. This chart shows the indicated airspeed on the horizontal axis and the load factor on the vertical axis. From point A to point J is the stalling airspeed or VSO. Below this point, our airplane will stall regardless of what the load factor is. We see this on our airspeed indicator represented by the bottom part of the white R. From point C to point H is the maneuvering speed or VA. Up to this speed, if we put too much load on the airplane, it will stall before any structural damage can happen. The A is not color-coded on the airspeed indicator. This maneuvering speed is noted in the POH and is often marked on a placard on the instrument panel. From point D to point G is the maximum structural cruise speed or VNO. If you exceed that maneuvering speed and the maximum load factor for the airplane, this is the range in which we can start seeing structural damage or structural failure. VNO is represented on our airspeed indicator by the point at which the green arc ends and the yellow arc begins. From point E to point F is the never exceed speed or VNE. If we exceed this speed, it may result in structural damage to the aircraft. This speed is normally represented by a red line on the airspeed indicator. The line from point C to point E represents the positive limit load factor, which is the maximum load factor authorized during flight. The lines from point I to point G and from point G to point F represent the negative limit load factor. When the load factor is zero or very small, occupants feel weightless. When the load factor is negative, occupants feel that they are upside down. Exceeding the positive limit load factor, the negative limit load factor, or VNE, would subject the airplane to structural damage or failure. An airplane wing can stall at any attitude and any airspeed. An accelerated stall is more aggressive than a 1G stall, and it can happen if the airplane is headed straight up, straight down, or anywhere in between. It occurs at a higher airspeed than when the wings are level and gives less warning. When an airplane is forced into an accelerated stall at twice its normal stall speed, the load factor is approximately 4 Gs. I hope today's lesson was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future private pilot ground school lessons. And if you're interested in doing your private pilot ground school online directly with me, and have me sign you off to take your FAA private pilot written exam, please reach out at chicksoflyofficial at gmail.com.